tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Good evening. It's another Wednesday and uh, another uh, one and a half hour of uh, uh, Feng Shui uh, discussion. No? So tonight, as a post-Chinese New Year uh, uh, rejoinder, I uh, will share with you eight initial amazing Feng Shui stories that will uh, awaken you to the powers of the science of uh, energy management called Feng Shui. Nah? Okay, so tonight you can uh, be ready with your uh, uh, paper and uh, pencils or pens to take salient notes no? along the way for your nuggets of learning. Uh, we will do it in uh, uh, short business case studies of how uh, from my personal experience uh, Feng Shui can be uh, as we call it, an adjective also lucky, okay? So before we start, uh, when uh, my colleagues in the JCS, uh, uh, namely uh, past uh, National President Jerry Sevilla and another past uh, National President uh, uh, Bobby Alvarez, uh, both of uh, Makati JCS and uh, uh, Paranyake Jaycees um, had a joint area meeting among uh, several JC chapters at Aberdeen Court in Makati Avenue. And they asked me if, uh, since I think it was Chinese New Year time, uh, if I can invite uh, my Feng Shui master, no? my teacher, to be the guest speaker to cap the night for uh, uh, a night of Chinese New Year en enjoyment. Okay, so I did. And it so happened that uh, during the open forum, this uh, business case I call the Realtors Challenge. No? So after everything was said and done by our uh, uh, master speaker, regarding uh, the outlook of the year and Feng Shui prognosis and recommendations for each uh, Chinese zodiac sign. In the open forum, a realtor stood up. He was a uh, uh, JC uh, Jojo Faren. He was then uh, a realtor. He stood up and to my surprise, he challenged the guest speaker on the plenary floor, not to a fight, okay? But uh, it, it, since during that time, uh, there was an economic crisis and it badly hit the real estate sector and him as a salesperson, as a realtor, was badly affected. And he confessed before the group that he was doing badly. No? So he challenged the Feng Shui master if indeed Feng Shui works because he was then volunteering himself no? on the floor to be the guinea pig to prove that Feng Shui works. What a smart Alec. No? Uh, it immediately occurred to me, uh, uh, this guy just wants to save one Feng Shui piece, okay? But uh, nevertheless, I was also surprised when the Feng Shui master uh, engaged him and told him, if only to prove to you that Feng Shui works, that is a science, and it did not be done by me, it can be done by anybody who understands Feng Shui clearly, then I would like to assign and volunteer my uh, 
uh, friend over here who's your fellow JCs, which was apparently me, to do your feng shui. And rest assured, uh, it will work on you. So bringing in a new, uh, I think uh, the pattern that time was somebody can bring in a Mercedes Benz latest model through BOI or DTI incentives uh, that uh, he needed a lucky plate number and he wanted me to help him secure uh, an 888 car plate from fellow JC at LTFRB uh, head uh, Dante Lantin whom he knew I was also doing Fung Sui for no, at the time. So I said, okay. And time and again, uh, he had new vehicles and we had to facilitate lucky numbers for him. And one day, he invited me to attend his birthday party. I said, uh, I don't know your friends and uh, uh, I might be out of place. He said, no, it's very important. You will understand later. So when I attended this party that night, uh, at the middle of the impromptu program, he stood beside his Aruana Aquarium, which we had placed when we did Feng Shui for the house. And he said, uh, let me interrupt this program to introduce to you my Feng Shui guy. And why I need to introduce him to you is not to promote his services or whatnot, no? but uh, just to prove to you that uh, I am not a carnapper, I'm not a drug dealer, nor a kidnapper, as rumors around our village are going on. Because most neighbors, uh, I understand, are suspicious of my fast uh, accumulation of vehicles that uh, parking has spilled out to the streets, no? Uh, and rumors are afoot that uh, I'm getting rich because I'm a criminal character, no? He <laughs> said, and. Uh, to put all those rumors to rest, uh, let me share with you the secret. And the secret was this guy who showed me and it worked. And that's it. Now, uh, I don't have to explain myself anymore to you. I hope you understand why. Uh, <laughs> and most of the villagers there were Chinese. And so they were all nodding their head. Okay, so I'm known to him after that during the uh, cocktails, no? Well, over beer and uh, uh, food, most of the villagers, his neighbors, approached me to get my number. Okay, and only for me to be surprised the next day, his immediate uh, uh, neighbor across the street, an uh, architect couple, engaged me discreetly not to tell him to have feng shui and it was a fertility case no? imagine uh, a couple both architects having built their dream mansion uh, at a plush village like acropolis and it was a lonely uh, environment whereby uh, the occupant was only uh, both of them, a maid, a driver, and nothing more, no? Uh, no baby. Apparently, for almost eight years uh, being married, they had fertility issues, no? But no medical impediments. So, um, with that, we did the uh, feng shui of the house, it turns out that the master's bedroom is only good for the husband, so it renders uh, uh, reproduction-wise the wife 
having no fertile uh, fertility energies to conceive a baby. And it turns out only the guest room is uh, fine-tuned for the fertility uh, uh, and reproductive capacity of uh, the wife. So we recommend, I recommended that uh, uh, if they're serious in having a baby, the feng shui recommendation is to do what I call a full cord press. I said, what's a full cord press? I said, when you make baby, first half, master bedroom. Second half, guest room. So balance, yin and yang. And thereafter, nine months later, I received a surprise call, uh, invitation to a baptism in the village clubhouse uh, with uh, with uh, Jojo as Ninong uh, together with me, no, for their new baby. And thereafter, it was a spiral story of uh, all the other neighbors engaging also my uh, services. So it developed my Feng Shui market base. Almost a good 80% of Acropolis in uh, Libis uh, became my client. Be it Chinese descent or Filipina descent, uh, does, no? I see cotton buds <laughs> on top of the door sticking out you know all these uh, estampitas uh, things that espiritistas do uh, from Quiapo which for me are all folklore or superstition and not proper feng shui so in a crash course I oriented the principal uh, Mrs. Sia and uh uh, her financial advisors on what the proper feng shui moves are, okay? But what was necessary, I said, was a balance of energy forces because there is an unseen uh, factor if we just do the office. I said, it is imperative that we do her house, which was somewhere in Pasig, no? in one of the executive villages. Uh, so we did also the feng shui of the house. Uh, it turned out that the real dilemma of her six billion financial problem originated from her house, okay? Because in the master's bedroom, she was one of the first ones to have this humongous giant uh, uh, projection TV, the size of a queen size bed put upright uh, she bought it from Hong Kong and uh, it was right there grandly sitting at the center in front of her bed my, uh, her their master's bedroom bed for proper viewing uh, in front of their uh, uh, bed was the giant uh, projection TV and what was unique about that projection TV was it had a rabbit antenna, you know, this uh, robot-like thing with two antennas you fix to capture the signal, no? And when I went closer, the rabbit antenna had a base which had a picture frame. And the picture frame had the image of Hong Kong's uh, view no so it had the ocean it's like hong kong bay or something in front no? uh, a body of water which i pointed out to mrs tia was the cause of her dilemma because in feng shui you should never put any water symbol in the master's bedroom and it so happened this small picture frame embedded in the uh, a rabbit antenna was an ocean bay and water symbolizes money and if it's in the master's bedroom it symbolizes money or financial drain so I said mom can you imagine 
you're draining yourself equivalent to the volume of water of Hong Kong Bay. It's like Manila Bay or bigger, no? So you can imagine the volume of water and the volume of money that's drained from your coffers. And true enough, we have the figure six billion. Okay, uh, I think uh, she owed it PNB or DBP, no, at the time. No? So she said, "What's the remedy? Do I get rid, rid of the TV?" And I said, "No, ma'am. Very simple remedy. Let's get rid of the picture." of the bay because it was like a photograph a postcard just inserted into the uh, base picture frame of the rabbit antenna mr chua her husband was so happy about uh, taking care of a pet turtle being chinese he knew that uh, uh, turtle is also a, a bringer of good luck to a home or a person's uh, life no and even enterprise, okay? So what was the result of her dilemma after around uh, uh, less than a month, the six billion problem was restructured and solved eventually. And when I went back to visit, I said, oh mom, where's Mr. Chua? Oh, he goes home early now, why? Uh, uh, no work or what? No. He wants to talk to the turtle every day. <laughs> okay. So uh, her husband found a new uh, pet hobby and uh, companion uh, to take away his stress from his daily grind. Okay. So that's what we call uh, the sugar baroness business case. No, a six billion uh, matter problem solved in less than a quarter okay uh, so that's our second story we have six more stories to complete eight prosperity stories today okay so feel free to ask questions huh? just comment and uh, we will address this as we go along okay so our next uh, uh, a uh, business case would be what I call uh, the flour mill CBA or collective bargaining agreement. Okay. One time, I had a Balikbayan client who came in from the States uh, and consulted me about her uh, siblings' affairs and her uh, Pung Sui Tu. Apparently, I was surprised that uh, their family owned the biggest, if not one of the biggest, uh, flour mills uh, situated along the Pasig River. That simple. Okay? So, that ends our lesson in uh, collective bargaining agreement issues. No? If you want uh, industrial peace, there are techniques on how to promote it without being argumentative or combative or just feeding your lawyer with legal fees, okay? So, uh, that's uh, our uh, third uh, case study for tonight. Amazing, right? And uh, before we go for another break, let's tackle the candle factory another case of an aborted strike it's also a cba case no and again this was influenced by fellow jc's in the junior chamber uh my late good friend uh, jci senator uh dito maruho of uh, elegant city introduced me to one of uh the senior uh, entrepreneur uh, JCI senators from Malabon. No? Apparently, he owned the biggest candle factory in the Philippines, Liwanag Candles, Mr. Sevilla. No? 
JC I Senator Sevilla. I forgot if his name is Joe or I don't know. Uh, because it was way back in the 90s, no? I was still uh, young then, okay? But my memory serves me short this time, no? So I went to his candle factory and we did the basic feng shui and he said, what else do we need to do to uh, resolve this crisis? Because at that time, uh, November 1 or uh, All Saints Day, the Day of the Dead was coming up and they need uh, to produce buffer stock for, you know, uh, it's a peak season demand and it will be bad if they will be hit by a strike. You know? So time was of the essence. So he was after any quick uh, accelerator from a feng shui viewpoint and I suggested to him sir in feng shui the secret to plug and play feng shui is to have an arowana uh, of course it's in an aquarium we place it properly in your office and it shortens the gestation time of feng shui without an arowana it goes uh, to work, Feng Shui goes to work 90 days period. Okay, so it might affect your timeline, it might delay uh, your uh, negotiations and even your production to have your buffer stock for uh, All Saints Day. So, between investing in an arowana and aquarium and it's all its fittings from the pet shop which at that time was just around at most 5,000 pesos, uh, it was worth the risk taking. So welcome back. Uh, I hope you have uh, four nuggets of learning from our first business cases, first four. Let's continue with the second half, the next four. Okay. First among which will be what I call uh, what you enjoy now, the joys of NLEX, the North Luzon Expressway, Pung Sui. Okay. Uh, again, uh, I happened to Pung Sui this case out of serendipity. I was enjoying with my family at the, uh, Camp Janhei where the park course was and the kids play board, the skating rink actually. Uh, my kids, my small kids then were uh, skating and I, somebody tapped me on the back. I turned around, it was my fellow Manila JC, uh, Gary Espino. And he said, how are you? I said, okay, I'm fine. And he suddenly popped up the question. Uh, pare, can you help me with my uh, problem? I said, well, uh, personal? I said, no, no, it's uh, professional. It involves my company. Why? What's your company? I said, I'm now with the, the Lopez Group, Manila North uh, Tollways Corporation, MNTC. I said, what's your work? I said, I'm the Chief Financial Officer. CFO. So I said, uh, what's your problem? He said that uh, it's been now for nine years that the financial and physical rehabilitation of NLEX has been delayed. Can Feng Shui help with that? He said, I said, nothing wrong. Uh, Feng Shui is a very basic uh, tool especially for management, and you can apply it. So I said, okay, I'm more than willing to try, but let's be discreet about it because my colleagues in the company, a good 80 plus percent of them are opus day. So I said, no problem, no conflict with the being opus day. I used to be a, uh, uh, an ardent uh, 
follower of the student uh, uh, study centers of Opus Day when I was early in college. So I'm familiar with the culture. I said, uh, I said good. So when we visited the office, I met his boss, uh, then former DPWA Secretary Ping De Jesus. It's good that uh, uh, Ping De Jesus was familiar with Feng Shui. For, as he related, President Corey during uh, his time as DPWA also resorted to Feng Shui for groundbreaking of projects, a proper timing of uh, DPWH projects. No? Uh, with Feng Shui advice coming from uh, uh, the Cory side. No? So I said, that's good, sir. At least uh, we will not have difficulty in adjusting. And he just said, can we just do the Feng Shui after office hours when not so many are around, especially the executives, because it may just harbor uh, resistance no? because of their belief as Opus Day. So uh, every uh, uh, exit we examined and uh, no. And the finding was uh, uh, it, the basic Feng Shui was done in the office. We also did for uh, certain uh, key office stations along the way. And the only thing now needed was a special Feng Shui treatment. And since uh, this concerns uh, the careers of all the people involved in the company, you see, their salaries were technically, because of the rehab program lacking the funds, frozen for nine years. Uh, their salaries were still on the Jurassic uh, early years of the nine years level. No? So equal to their government, let's say CDCP counterparts. No? But the families, their kids are growing up, literally uh, uh, entering college and you know, the tuition fees at that time were soaring, incrementing uh, almost 15% annually. No? Uh, and it will be a strain to everybody's uh, uh, family uh, net take home pay. No? So they were looking forward to the rehab project as a means to increase the and modernize even the salary scale of the employees. So bottom line, it involved the careers of everyone. And in Feng Shui, the best uh, technique to protect careers is to put a special turtle uh, figurine in their case because it's hard for them with the environment having Opus Day, you know, and Filipino superstitious belief, not believing in turtle as a lucky charm, instead believing the traditional perspective that it's malas, it's too slow, it encounters resistance. So I recommended to them with the, my, by the way, the uh, quantification of the rehab project was it needed a 13 billion peso rehabilitation loan from a consortium of uh, 11 banks. No? And year in and year out, for nine years, the Japanese bank Sumitomo always rejected the consortium uh, offer sheet. No? Uh, for some reason or another. Turtle natin. I said, why? Later, I'll pass by for you after this uh, ceremony is here. They were already groundbreaking the rehabilitation. So, after he passed by for me to share the story 
over a few rounds of uh, drinks nearby, he shared that uh, ano, that morning, the auditor who was uh, of the consortium banks assigned was a vice president of Sumitomo Bank, a Japanese, visited his uh, CFO office. It's a good thing he was there. And when he saw the turtle, he asked, what's that? Oh, he said, I'm sorry, sir, you might not understand, but that's for Feng Shui. No? Oh, the vice president said, Feng Shui, now you know what you're doing. Give me the papers. He said, I will sign the document for the 13 billion peso release. So right there and then, uh, the rehab problem was solved. And thereafter, uh, Gary enjoyed uh, uh, many other feng shui occasions with us together, selling houses and his moving in career uh, happily ever after. Okay, so that's end story. And even for the company, MNTC, no, I'm a Manila North Tollways Corporation, uh, aside from uh, being on the recovery path already with the rehab, uh, another serendipitous moment occurred. I had a get together with my uh, classmates in college in uh, one of the homes in uh, Forbes Park. So happened, a former finance secretary uh, of Gloria was there and I was kidding him about uh, a poor investment move that he and his uh, colleagues made. I think they bought uh, Burger King uh, with so much liabilities. I said, why bother with such uh, garbage investments? I am sure you can create financial magic with that, but you know, there are so many diamonds in the backyard. I said, what? What do you mean? There is a company for sale, MNTC, the NLEX uh, project of the Lopez's. It was for sale at that time. And it's a cash cow. And it has intrinsic investment value. I said, yeah? What's the intrinsic investment value? He said, I said, you know, uh, tell your partners the best intrinsic value of an expressway billboard advertising. It's just in a lockout right now. You cannot do billboard for seven years. And I think the seven years will expire soon. And from then on, if you're the new owner, you can do your thing. No? So the synergies of your advertising for products, whatever, if your partner is, uh, let's say, MVP, uh, one packet to another. No? So that was end of story in our cocktail night get together that night. Two weeks later, I learned in the papers, their group bought the Lopez Group MNTC. Business okay. case would be uh, the stockbroker and bank owner who survived jail and even a bank run. Okay, so this happened when uh, a college friend of mine who's a deep feng shui aficionado whose career rose from a credit clerk. That time he was treasurer of uh, the bank he worked for. Now he's a uh, uh, bank president. No? His uh, ultimate uh, career dream, no? achieve. No? Of course, with a little help from Feng Shui, no? all throughout. No? Uh, Mr. Uh, Tony Mungkupa of East West Bank he used to be with uh, uh, IBAC. Okay. So when he was with IBAC, he asked me uh, to please meet his boss, 
if Feng Shui can resolve a certain dilemma. So we went to Tech Tight. It so happened that his boss was uh, part of the bank ownership, uh, uh, the owner of Wealth Securities, uh, Wilson C. No? Uh, the famed uh, one of the samurais of the local stock market. I don't know what it meant. No? Uh, I'm not into active stock trading. But anyway, uh, when we went and met at the uh, lounge, no? over lunch, introduced me to Doctora Florence, the wife of Wilson, and of course Wilson. And he stated the problem that uh, at that time, it was at the high aftermath actually of the BW stock manipulation uh, scandal. No? And to cut the long story short, uh, he was afraid he might end up in jail because he was summoned by the president then to return what was the investment money around 5 billion pesos lost in the stock market by the president and his uh, partner. No? Uh, I forgot the name. No? But um, I said, okay, that, we just resort to the basic uh, Feng Shui motions no? for your office, then your home. Okay. So, there was initial resistance because, well, he was a self-made billionaire and, you know, he was like uh, Gordon Gecko, <laughs> no, in Wall Street. He was like a gnome of Wall Street and a godfather of the stock market. And he said, I really don't believe in Feng Shui, no. I'm a self-made man, self-made billionaire. And uh, so with that, I just turned to Tony and said, Eh, di naman pala naniniwala sa Feng Shui. Uwi, ano lang tayo, di ba? I mean, what's the use of engaging Feng Shui? It's a good thing, uh, uh, Doctora, his uh, wife, better half, intervened. I said, no, uh, let's go to the motions. Because of the simple thing, that's why we wanted to try Feng Shui, is uh, we cannot wake up one day to the reality, let's say, if it's true, the threat of the president that he will throw my husband in jail, what's the future for my kids? No. So I said, okay, let's go. Uh, since we finished lunch, we started doing Feng Shui in his office. As I was moving his desk to uh, the proper orientation, he, I think, uh, if I remember right, being a dragon. No? So we oriented it in uh, the proper dragon's place, no? uh, place of command and power and good uh, chi. No? Thing bad in his house was he had a pet canary with a passport gifted to him by investment bankers from Hong Kong and was singing, a, you know, a full note, which he enjoyed very much. And I said, you know, pet canaries, it's not the bird that's the problem. It's the cage. A caged bird in a house means the owner can be jailed. So no wonder you receive a jail threat. And no less than the president of the Philippines, pa. And his mom, who was around, Ama, uh, told him so. He was, she was agreeable because she knew, you know, traditional feng shui. She knew that uh, a caged bird is also bad. So he asked me, what's the cure? So I said, get rid of the bird. You can gift it to any, uh, the best is to give it to any parish priest na friend mo because the priest has to be caged inside the confines of the church and the mang chicks, no? <laughs> not to stray away from the Vatican. No? Uh, okay lang for uh, not to enjoy the 
singing bird inside this uh, uh, convent or uh, cloister. So he did so. He gifted it to uh, to uh, I think the nearby uh, parish priest in Green Hills. No. Okay. So all told, everything was said and done. Uh, one day early the next year he calls me hey have you seen the news i said no i was so busy it was it was around something like chinese new year or so I said why you know the president who threatened me is being arrested now from his house and it's all over the news on tv you were right he will be jailed first uh Oh, don't say that, I, I said. I said, why? Uh, that's assuming that you will be jailed next, no? So forget the first, no? So only him will be jailed, <laughs> okay? So we both laughed it off, okay? So it was a happy ending on the first issue. No more threat of getting jailed, okay? So the one who threatened him got jailed, okay? And of course, uh, the stock market uh, issue faded away. Well, one of my clients, uh, Bongo Ferraren, who was uh, from Electromedia Advertising and Productions, he was also the creative director of Philippine Refining Company for all their branded uh, products. No? Breeze, Rejoice, I think, uh, uh, personal care products. So he said, are you free this afternoon? Uh, please do me a favor. We have a feng shui problem to present to you for solution. There's a board meeting at our UN Avenue office at uh, 6 p.m. It's timely because I was working then. Uh, I'm out by five, one hour traffic, enough to reach uh, United Nations. I worked downtown that time, so I chartered the Kalesa. <laughs> okay. So, from 5 p.m., the Kalesa trotted its way to Quiapo, uh, Nagtahan, crossing the Pasig, and I ended up in UN Avenue, eventually into their driveway. <laughs> and as I alighted from the Kalesa, I was greeted by the board of directors of uh, Philippine Refining Company, which, to my surprise, majority were from the Netherlands, no? uh, they were all white, no? uh, and London. No? So I asked, I met the chairman of the board, uh, Mr. Cesar Buenaventura. Of course, Bongo escorted me, introduced me to the uh, marketing director, Olive Van Straten. Okay, he was a Dutch guy. No? So we went up to the boardroom. And the uh, business went to order right away. No? The order of business uh, first tackled the feng shui problem. So the chairman of the board, Mr. Cesar Rubautista, presented the case that they had during that time, the early 90s. If you notice, all the products were printed with this inverted triangle with the words total quality underneath. So it was a prescribed total quality program from uh, their head office. So being uh, multinational uh, branches uh, worldwide, uh, they had to conform with it. However, they met market resistance in the Philippines. No? Wholesalers like Swissing, uh, Binondo wholesalers that were responsible for distributing it for the rest of the Philippines, uh, from Divisoria, uh, didn't want to patronize their product. And they said it was because the feedback was bad feng shui, generated by the total quality uh, design. And when I looked at it, it indeed it was an inverted triangle, and Oliver and Stratton explained that it was an inverted triangle because the triangle 
inverted represented the torso of a person, especially women, uh, to connote fashion, no? uh, the silhouette of uh, the human body. And that's the focus of personal care. The message was they were providing total quality management for all their personal care products for the consumer. But uh, there was market resistance. And as uh, uh, Mr. Ole explained, uh, they encounter Feng Shui in Vietnam, Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, and nothing wrong as a matter of management policy. They do as the Romans do. They conform with the culture in order to fit into the respected markets that they serve. So in this case, they couldn't understand why, for the first time in the Philippines, they met so much resistance. No? Uh, only later did I uh, learn from a fellow classmate who was, only later did I learn he was also involved in uh, uh, PRC uh, as an active marketing guy. Uh, Delphine Vivar Jr. or June Vivar, uh, who was almost chairman also, save for health problems for the whole uh, Unilever or uh, PRC outfit. Uh, In one uh, homecoming, shared with me, said, oh, you were the one who feng shui that. You know, said, the total quality uh, silhouette problem, the triangle, Distributors didn't want to carry a product, and we were losing around 600 million pesos at the time uh, uh, you were called in. So well, he asked me, What did you do then? Uh, Share to me the story. And then, so isang kwento na lang. Uh, yung kwento ko sa kanya, kwento ko sa inyo ngayon, para isang kwento na lang tayo. Okay? So, I said, you know, when they presented that problem, I had to uh, rest my case uh, on the basis of presenting uh, the feng shui problem clearly to them. I said, you know, any triangle pointing downward is bad feng shui. It's like uh, failure, symbol for failure. pointing down okay so the other thing is triangles are bad in feng shui because they're abrasive they have sharp corners they wound the sensitivities and interest of your stakeholders okay so two negative factors so they said is there a feng shui remedy for that so i said gentlemen here, I rest my case. It takes genius to accept the obvious. If downward triangle is uh, bad, it means failure, we flip it upwards to connote success. Okay. With that, uh, I hope you enjoyed these uh, learning stories tonight. And should you uh, have any concerns, uh, parallel to these cases and you would like to consult just feel free to get in touch uh, with me no? through this page okay so until next time please remember sa ikaunlad ng bayan feng shui po ang kailangan maraming salamat big media to the staff and of course to our fellow class Stay tuned for the next episode only here on Big Media.